right, so we are getting ready for the arrival of our Monarch Caterpillars and in doing so we have these pop-up tents that we use to keep them in a safe place so that they can grow. Inside each one of these is going to be one of these glass cups where we will keep the milkweed that we snip hydrated. Yeah. The caterpillars will spend at least two weeks in here eating the milkweed that we provide for them because that's the only plant that they will eat until they're old enough to survive the metamorphosis of going from a juvenile caterpillar into a pupa stage, which would be their chrysalis, and then finally emerging as an adult, which is the monarch butterfly. Okay, so it's a very exciting day. UPS just dropped off this box, and inside the box were these tiny little cups. And in each cup, there is a maximum of five monarch caterpillars. And if you zoom in real close, you can see just how tiny they are. In this cup, we have four right here on the edge. In order to get them out, we're gonna have to use a paintbrush. At this stage, they are far too tiny to pick up with our fingers, and even using the paintbrush is proving challenging. It's almost as if they have something sticky coming from them. The monarch caterpillars have the ability to produce silk on their feet and from their rear end, which help them crawl up and down plants and eventually hang upside down to form their chrysalis. With this caterpillar on a penny, you can see just how tiny these butterfly larvae are when they begin their lives. As soon as the caterpillars arrived, the real work begins. Here, Miss Lou is cutting fresh milkweed from our garden by the front door. For many years, Schlegel staff have been caring for a small crop of milkweed to support wild and captive monarchs. It's important to check your milkweed for wild monarch eggs or caterpillars before bringing it inside. We don't want to do more harm than good when raising monarchs. Clipping fresh milkweed is a chore. Just look at how much eight caterpillars decimated this leaf. All of this was done in only two days. After we've clipped all our milkweed, the next step is to rinse the leaves. This removes potential predators and competitors, giving our caterpillars the best chance of survival in captivity. While Miss Lou is gathering the caterpillar food, Miss Jessica is preparing the caterpillar's new home. Let's check in with her. Okay, so one of the things you have to do for your milkweed um, before you put it in water is you need to cover the glass or a vase or whatever it is with saran wrap. Um, that helps for two things. One, it keeps, helps keep your milkweed in place in the glass, but also it prevents your caterpillars from falling in the water and drowning, especially when they're itty bitty bitty and brand new like they are today. So it's really simple. First of all, I use a glass because the saran wrap will stick to it better. So all you do is really simple, cover it, it doesn't matter what size you tear it. And then what I do is I pull it with my fingers and I stretch it out as tight as I can get it. The tighter it is, the better your milkweed will stay in place. And then pull it down, wrap it. And the best thing is to add a rubber band that keeps it in place. Now, all this excess saran wrap, you'll need to cut this off because the caterpillars can fall down into that and get stuck. So I just cut it as close as you can to where it's banded on the glass. And then the excess, just kind of squish it down. And then you're ready to go. And right before I stick a stalk of milkweed in it, I take the scissors or something like a pen or pencil and just poke one little simple hole in the middle or for however many milkweed plants you're gonna need. One thing really quick I wanna point out before we start transferring our baby caterpillars, our little guys, over to our milkweed is Something that's really important to know is whatever milkweed you start them with to feed, you need to stick with that same type of milkweed. Here we've got uh, two types of milkweed that we grow out here. It's called common milkweed and also Sullivan's or prairie milkweed. Um, these are a little bit difficult to get started at home. Um, they're real finicky, but once you start growing them, they'll grow pretty well on their own. But this all here is native to Kansas and Missouri. 
And like I said, whatever milkweed you start with them, with them, just stick to it because um, they will not switch over their food, like what they eat, if you try to give them something different. With our pop-up tents full of fresh milkweed, it's time to grab our paintbrushes and start the big move. Once we get all the caterpillars out of the tiny cups, one by one they go to work fattening up on milkweed. Then the real work begins for us. Even though we put the milkweed in water, they still tend to dry out before the caterpillars can eat through all of it. Plus, they're pooping everywhere, making a mess of their enclosure. So every two days, we have to go out to our milkweed patch, clip more plants, shake out the tents, refill the water, and find all those tiny caterpillars on the old milkweed and transfer them to the fresh plants. It's a lot of work. Monarchs are masters of disguise, hiding in the curled up edges of leaves or on the underside, and when they're tiny, they're even harder to find. Fortunately, they don't stay small for long, and eventually, with full stomachs, they start crawling to the top of the tent. They're ready to leave the larva stage and begin to pupate. Here in this clip, Miss Jessica and myself are working together to find all the caterpillars and move them to the fresh plants after we clean the tents. In all, it took about 20 minutes for all four tents. There's eight to 10 caterpillars hiding in each one, so finding all of them takes a while. But once we get them settled, the caterpillars happily go back to munching away on their leaves. Our first chrysalis appeared on August 31st, just two weeks after we received our baby monarchs. We attached the pupa to the top of the enclosure so we could watch the metamorphosis. Soon, the top of the enclosure was full of chrysalids waiting to emerge as beautiful adult butterflies. When it's time for the final transformation, the chrysalis becomes transparent and suddenly bursts open to reveal a wrinkled butterfly. The abdomen is huge and the wings are wrinkled, but as the butterfly pumps its wings, they unfold and harden to reveal our magnificent adult monarch. Raising monarchs is a whirlwind, but we are so fortunate to watch them grow and then send them on their migration to Mexico. We hope you enjoyed this video and we ask that you participate in helping the monarch population, whether it's raising them, tagging, growing milkweed, or just learning more about the species. The monarchs will be around for many generations to come thanks to your love of butterflies.